Okay, uh, Fernando Ribeiro here. Um, well, don't you know I've been only showing the results of Yuma? Now finally I'm going to be able to uh, show you the behind the scenes and explain the, the basics for uh, get, getting Yuma to work. Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me create a new project here. It's really important by now to start with a clean project so uh, you can uh, do all the, the tests without risking uh, losing any data of your own projects. So this is a new project. I'm going to import the package. This one is the one you're going to have access. So here we go. We really need to import all the files. Okay. Okay, perfect. So now we have uh, all the files. First of all, uh, we need to find the, the right scene. It's here in Yuma Projects, Scenes. Here in Yuma Game Objects, we have a, a collection of game objects that have uh, some function uh, inside uh, the, 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 the way of creating procedural characters. So first of all, uh, I really need to, to explain that as we have both uh, Unity Pro and Unity Engine, there is uh, in Yuma generator, right there in Yuma, we have a checkbox uh, for using uh, Pro for many, many necessary uh, process uh, when generating uh, atlas, textures for the, the avatars, this kind of thing. Well, why this is a checkbox? Why it's not automatic? automatically identifying uh, if we are using Pro. Uh, I really want to be able to test on both and uh, I also want to give the Pro developers the, the chance to, to test performance on Indie uh, license. So uh, if you're uh, using a, a Indie license you should uh, uncheck this this checkbox. I will leave this uh, checked for, for the Pro license. Mainly with the Pro we have a, a very faster uh, processing time for, for generating Atlas and this kind of thing because we are using render texture for that. Also uh, Keep in mind that as I'm using Pro, I'm also working with light probes. So I've pre-calculated the light, uh, even been a, a simple uh, scene. I have uh, three, three directional lights here. Uh, only one is enabled because the other two were already baked on the light probes. So if you're using NG, you're probably going to have to adjust the lights to have a, a closer uh, result to what I'm going to show you here. Because here I have a, a more more bright scene because the lights were already calculated, you know. So uh, let's begin. I will hit play here. Uh, you're going to notice a lot of uh, sliders, <laughs> really. Uh, for now, uh, I'm not going to worry about this. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, to remove the, the Yuma customization here. Uh, and just turning it off. Uh, and I'm going to, to first of all create some, some avatars. So uh, the guy that handles this is Yuma Crowd. So basically this is 
uh, the one responsible for uh, populating the scene with random avatars. So basically, uh, you know, there is a lot of stuff I need to explain and uh, I will record many videos to, to show everything. So this one is going to cover the basic. Uh, I'm going to, to generate one simple Yuma here. So with the, 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 the game already been running, uh, I'm going to just click on this checkbox, gener generate Yuma. And we have uh, one avatar here. Please uh, take note that the, the performance here is getting a huge hit because of the video being recorded. Uh, so this is one avatar. Uh, if I delete this guy uh, and create another avatar, we're going to notice it's completely different. In this case, it even generated a, a, a male instead of female. Okay, so each time it's a different avatar. Here in Yuma Crowd, we have the generate lots of Yumas. In this case, we have uh, here defining how many will be created. In this case, 16. So I'm just going to remove those two and generate 16 of them. Okay. So here we go. Uh, let me just turn off the 3D gizmos so we can see better this, this stuff. So uh, 16 of them, before getting crazy and creating 100, take, uh, uh, you, you need to be aware of the memory usage here. So with, uh, each of them is a unique texture and it's a, a quite high resolution texture. So because of that, we are uh, having a lot of memory usage here. I'm going to explain in, in a while how to reduce this memory usage, uh, processing uh, uh, Atlas with lower resolution. So here uh, you should have noticed I'm using render textures for the, the, the final Atlas on Pro. If I I get uh, to process those with Indy. That's what's going to to happen now. You're going to to notice I'm not going to have a a, a render texture here changing, but the the user textures. Also, I'm going to change the resolution of the atlas here. In fact, uh, it's a junction of two elements. Here we are defining that the, the final resolution is this one. Uh, here this is basically a temporary uh, solution for showing that we can simply uh, change the, the Atlas uh, resolution uh, size. So in this case it's going to be uh, quite smaller. And also, it makes possible to create uh, avatars with indie version uh, in a quite uh, acceptable speed. So you see here one of them. Uh, you can see the resolution is quite lower, and uh, here they use the textures. Let me remove this guy. Yeah, right. So. Um, uh, for finishing this video, uh, let me select one of those and explain how how it works. So here, the, the each of each of the avatars have a unique mesh. It's only one mesh, and uh, in this case, the male, as he's not uh, using eyelash eyelashes, uh, it's only one one texture. Uh, I mean one material with two textures, the GFUs and normal map. For females, we have also uh, a shader for um, eyelashes, 
that only uses the you know the only one texture so you can see the eyelashes here okay so the here what what I want to to show you know is the the atlas itself so here is an atlas okay uh, in this case you can you can notice that the clothes uh, most of the clothes are only overlays what I mean by overlays is that it's only a texture uh, only I, I'm just changing the texture itself the mesh is the same you can see here uh, the same for the hair you know uh, it's interesting uh, uh, I've done uh, done it in a, in a way that I can uh, have an extra mesh here but it's using the same uh, atlas space of the head because this mesh is already occluding what, what would be visible on this area of the texture uh, you can see even the eye is receiving the, the, the colors uh, everything and uh, one interesting situation, uh, I've included this on purpose, so I could show now. Here, in this case, the, the hair, I've defined it as a separated uh, texture. So in this case, it's not using the head. So uh, later, I will be able to show on, in the code what's different, you know. Also, uh, the this shirt is a, a separated mesh. You see, so it it's also receiving a, a unique texture. Uh, th the same is not happening on the the jeans. Uh, let me see if I, I find it. Okay, here. This one is only overlay, only texture. This one you can see the, the mesh itself is different. Uh, it's a uh, different and unique mesh. You can see that the topology uh, of the clothes can be completely different. And uh, even being a different uh, topology, I'm using the same uh, texture space you see here. So it's a, a good way to save uh, save texture. Sadly, on this case, I have those two here, killing the entire area of the atlas. Uh, but if I I was saving the area for the hair, this wouldn't happen. Uh, let me see if I can find a, a case like this. Of this. Okay. So here. Uh, the, the atlas is automatically uh, cropped by half because we are not using the rest of the, the space. No? Okay, uh, I think that that's enough for this video. I will keep uh, more information and more stuff in the next ones. I uh, hope you like this and uh, that's it. Goodbye.